pulling in and we're live okay hey everybody this is vicky uh and trevor uh from the rpg alliance we we're just talking about continuation of sunday morning chat about where we can put maps on that game masters are asking us and trevor is the expert on whiteboards so as you can see on your screen we are in our gather town space we're at table five in the octopus's beer garden gaming area and you should be able to see Trevor and I's little avatars walking around this little space. Everyone. Trevor, there I'm stuck in the whiteboard. Help, help. Get out of the whiteboard, Matt. Anyway, Trevor and I are going to go into the whiteboard, and Trevor's going to show us, because he's so good at the whiteboard stuff, how to use it. So I'm going to press X on the whiteboard, and you'll see it up on our screen there. And you'll see Trevor's little video icon up there, too. And go ahead, Trevor. Well, the whiteboard uh, is pretty easy to use, and one of the neat features is it's got two sides to it. So on the left is kind of as a text-only side where you can do game notes and player notes and all kinds of things that anyone can contribute to. So you can pass information to your players, or players can keep notes for themselves of important things that come up in-game. And then on the right side, we have the canvas. Uh, of course, you can choose whether you want to just show notes by clicking the note button at the top. Canvas button to zoom in fully to the canvas side if that's all you're going to use, or the both button, which will show both side by side. And on the canvas side, uh, it's a really simple drawing tool. And any of your players who are in the session can use it and contribute to your drawing without having to log in. So there is a sign in to eraser. I haven't played with that yet, but apparently if you have an eraser account, you can use that to connect to your account, but it works well even without doing that. And this whiteboard object is attached to this particular table. So if I close it, come back tomorrow, whatever was left behind is still going to be there, which is really cool. And the drawing tool, tools are really simple. Once you pick a tool, uh, you can choose the color. You can choose a fill, a green fill. You can choose from any of their basic simple uh, shapes. Arrows, of course, which are useful in mapping. Lines, which are ubiquitous. And, of course, the pencil. So this is great easy way just to add that uh, just in time mapping or drawing or whatever you want to do with it during your game and all your players can contribute players can select objects so if they want to make a token for themselves they can just drop something in and then they can move that around on the map can can i drop in the map now i'm really excited about this go ahead vicky we just discovered that you can drop in images all right, so I'm going to drop. dragging and dropping. And so I've just got my my map file on my computer, and I'm just going to drop in. There you go, a little ship map. Here, I'll pull it over, awesome. maybe. And, that, and then you said I could drop in a token, right? So let me pull up one of my DD tokens. So cool. I've never done this before. This is so cool. So let me see. Pull in. Ooh, wow. There you go. And let me just make her a little smaller. And I can put her on. Can we zoom in? Oh, yeah, There's you can zoom, zoom in. Zoom tools in the lower lower right. You just solved my problem for running my Cyberpunk game. This is so cool. It is so cool. And it's, so, it's, it's pretty basic, but that makes it easy to use. Oh, I, I didn't know this could drag and drop in there. That is this. Awesome. There you can go. add text if you need to. And that means you and can I'll, add any object too. Yeah. Now the one downside is there are no such things as layers in here. Yeah. So it's easy for someone to inadvertently grab the wrong thing and move it <laughs> out of the way. <laughs> We're swimming in a drink. We're swimming in the ocean. Throw me a life preserver. So just something to be aware of. 
Yeah, but that's good with the shapes too. So if you're casting like, you know, a uh, uh, fireball and you have to do the range, boom, there you go. Yeah, except if it's fireball, you need to get that. Ooh, nice oh, hey, that's cool. How did you do that? So if you click on the object, it's going to select it. And then in the upper right, your object tool comes up. You can set the stroke color, which is going to be the rim of the circle. Your background, you can choose either transparent or variety of colors. And, and there are some layer tools. Ah, this is all new. Oh, me. that's so cool. So there's a few things. I can send it to the back. I can bring it forward. I'd have to actually so get a token that ship. is transparent in the back, actually. Yeah, I need a transparent token. Actually, I've got lots of those. Keep going, Trevor. Keep going. I'm going to grab my tokens. Right. Playing around with some of the layers. That's cool. See, every time someone asks us a question, we like we learn so much by trying to figure out the answer. So thank you again, Ed, uh, for asking the question about maps and stuff. Because I was just talking about with Trevor with my idea of putting it into a poster map. And he goes, well, you can do that on the whiteboard. And I'm like, get out. And he's like, yeah, totally. Let me show you. And so that's this, right? Here, let me throw down a... There we go. So just playing with the layers, bringing an object forward and backward in the list, you can get them in the right order so that you can see your tokens with your fireball ring on your ship. That's so cool. So if you quickly make a your token with the that's transparent in the background, then I wouldn't have this problem with the white tokens I put on. That's great. That looks cool. I just put the little green Ronin dude. It's kind of small. He's only 30 pixels, so that's why it's small. And a little bit fuzzy, but obviously if I get a high def token, that would work great and look great. That's so cool. Yeah, it, it's pretty cool for for the simplicity of the tool, and it's all right there, embedded in there, and and ready to use. Right on. Anything else we want to cover in this? That is pretty I cool. Can't think of anything offhand. You can you can multi-select a bunch of images by dragging and dropping your mouse and surrounding them, and then clear them off. So I just dropped down the Bride of Frankenstein token from um, Gather Town from when you make your avatars, and I snipped it, and then I made it took it into uh, a different program to make the outside just transparent, and that's what it is. So if you have your if you're playing with your own token, you can easily make your avatar, a token, by just taking a picture on screen, snipping that, and just then wiping out all the, the white or all the blue with them um, and making it transparent. And there you go. So you would have your avatar in your game as well. So, again, more integration or immersion with the Gather Town, you know, avatar that you have running around. Sorry, that was a side. Sorry, I went down a rabbit hole with that. No worries. I'm just trying it myself. I'm wondering if we can then put in a link. Or what's that link button anyway? That copy link to elements. What's that do, Trevor? Where are you looking? On the right-hand side where the layer stuff is and the actions are. I think it's because I'm on my token. So if I click off my token, maybe it's not there. Oh, yeah, so when I ch click on an image or a token, it comes up on the right-hand side. Uh, what that does is it gives you a URL to the eraser.com site and that particular element. Oh. I'm wondering if there's a way we can roll, use a dice roller while you're in the whiteboard, or do you have to go out of it to do it? Yeah, unfortunately, Gather Town only supports embedding, like bringing up and interacting with one object at a time. Mm -hmm. So what you would have to do here is either launch the dice roller in a separate window or launch the whiteboard in a separate window. Right, right. And that's where if you click the... If you click the, the ship token and 
click that copy link to elements. Mm -hmm. Open a new tab or window in your browser and paste that link you just copied. It'll actually take you to Eraser. Oh, edit, oh my you can edit God. the whiteboard from within there. So that's how you could, if you want to switch to your dice roller in Gather Town, you could open Eraser in a separate window or tab, and then in Gather Town, bring up the dice roller. And you can just play, you can just have this as your map thing. That's so cool. And yeah. yet, you could also go back. So I'm just in Gather Town, I'm going back to that window just to show people. You can click out of it. And if we were sitting at the table, um, and I want to go over and click on my dice roller, which I have this funky dice, green dice on our table. I use X to bring it up. Trevor, do you want to come in and click on the dice too? Because you're good at figuring out weird buttons and stuff. So that's the witch dice roller. I wonder if we can make it pop out into its own window as well. I wonder if that can happen. Hey, look at they have the X card on it. Holy crap, I didn't realize that. So on the Witch Dice Roller, you see the X card, you mouse over the word in it, and you can raise it. X card was raised by me. Ah, okay. Very cool. And then it brings it up. That's cool. I've never seen and then it has a question mark. And it opens into the X card explanation of what the X card is. That's super cool. Okay, I gotta make sure I send this to a couple of people that were asking me about the X card. What's this? You can bookmark role here and settings. Simple. There's D and D5E specific. You go up to the top and click on that, then it will bring up that. And then there's settings. Settings. Are you following along? And if so you see the anything? Yeah. One of the things you have to do is, if we just <clears throat> interact with the dice roller, we're each going to have our own. And if you look in the lower right of the Witch Dice window, there's a name and a room. What we have to do is have the same room. So, Vicky, what room are you in? What room am I in? Is it at the bottom? It's sort of to the right, maybe in the middle of the screen. Okay, I'm going to go back to the simple window, right? Is that where you're at? Yes. Oh, okay, name and room, okay. So my so room is handmade, what... handmade spring soil. Oh, just wait, it just switched over. It has all kinds of different names for these things. Sorry. You, it's just a random name generator. You can actually put in your own name. So okay. Put in, put in RPG dash client dash alliance. Oh my god, this is Go so on. cool. Dash we're doing it. Okay. We're, we're doing it. We're living on the edge here. RPG dash alliance dash con, and then hit join room. I hope I hit it right. RPG dash alliance dash con. Yep. Okay. How do we tell if we're in the same room or not? I'm going to raise the X card again. There it is. I see your X card raised by Vicky. I keep raising it. Can you raise yours? There you go. That's so cool. Oh my God. Am I glad we're doing this? This is awesome. And then if awesome. I pick a, a dice to roll, you should see it in the in the dice log there. I do. Yeah, for sure. I'm going to click two, two D20s for advantage and disadvantage. Oh, we're five oh. and six, so they're pretty close. And being from DCC, I can even roll a D7. Oh, do you just go under the dice? DX? Or do you do plus, plus add? Oh, that's no, that's when you oh, add. Oh, interesting. Oh, nice. Okay. There it is. Okay. So you can actually click on multiple dice. So if I click on, say, a d20 and a d4 and then roll, it's going to roll both. Hey, how did you get the d7? In the lower left, there's a dx, and you can put any number in there. <gasps> okay. Just click in the box. Doing it, doing it. Oh, my God, that's so cool. DCC, of course, has the d30.
DCC has this is a too D30. too bad in the, in the dice roll. Oh, 28. Almost a crit. Ooh. So, so if you left click on one of the dice buttons, that will select it and add it to your roll. And if you click multiple times, so I can get 3d20. And if you right click on a mouse on one of the dice, so it will cool. reduce that count by one. So if you inadvertently click on, you know, d10 twi three times or something, I can right click on it to bring it back down to a two. Okay, I'm or trying choose to, to roll a figure that out. Oh, pretty nice dice roller. Yeah, this is so cool. And this is actually their built-in dice roller. So all you have to do for objects, you just go object in the map builder, put dice, and this is what comes up. And it's already embedded. And you can change the colors. This is cool. Yeah. All right. Well, that's ah, pretty if you click on the If you mm -hmm. click on the settings... It not only has some settings there, but it also has some tips and tricks on the right on you all about how to use the roller. This is pretty cool because that would be like, isn't called Cthulhu percentile dice? I think I so. I actually don't know. I haven't played. I've only played once and I can't remember. That's what happens when you get old. But yeah, any of those percentile games? Any. Anything will work in here. There's even a... Oh, I can add my modifier, so I can do a d20 plus 2. Be versatile. Yeah, this is excellent. So, cool. What else do we want to talk about today? So we got the whiteboard. Fantastic. How to use maps. Put your tokens on. Um, and then we have your dice roller. Again, I like the idea of having... Um, what you showed us with having it just be able to pop up into its own link on eraser.com. And so, and then going back into gather town and clicking on the dice and getting into this dice roller. That's pretty cool. The only thing would be now, and to help me figure this out is if you're doing pre-gen character sheets, obviously, like, I mean, I guess you could give them out to the players as documents off your Google docs or, or put it in your voice chat or your text chat on Discord. Like, what do you think about that, Trevor? Well, I know that you can, for example, you can embed uh, Google Sheets into GatherTown, but that's a build type operation. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, I don't really know how file distribution would work. I don't think you, I don't think GatherTown supports sharing files and being able to distribute files to your players. What I did for a game last night, mm -hmm. I set up a Google Drive with all the pre-gens. I sent a list, I sent the link to all my players. And then I set up a Google Sheet in GatherTown so that they could sign up to which character they want to play. And that way, every one of them is looking at the same sheet. And first come, first serve, they can put their name next to which character they picked. But the actual pre-gen characters I just had in PDFs, and I sent them the link separately through email. Yeah, that's what I think I'm going to do if I run a cyberpunk game. And then they can just open it up in the PDF form on their screen and just work from it. The other idea Very I was cool. thinking about was just putting each, each um, like doing a snip of that's here's my problem and I'll, I'll show it on the video is that i was thinking about doing cyberpunk uh, red game and it has a character generator and i was just complaining to you about how you can't download it and so my idea was just quickly take a snip of the character sheet and then embed it into a, an object on gather town and how that would look or not look but the problem with gather town part of what we're dealing with is that um it's pixelating some things, right? That's a bit of a worry. Um, when we're downloading stuff, or you know what I mean. Sorry, I'm, I'm yes, just... and it looks like I'm I'm looking into that. It looks like there is a bug in Gather Town where it's pixelating images because it's actually scaling images 120 percent 
from what you actually upload into the builder. Yeah. Um, and that resolution is just lost in their in their scaling. So there is a there is a bug in there that I'll be following up with. But well, but thanks to the um, the Gather Town Discord, there's a couple guys on there that jumped in and and pointed me in the right right direction. So uh, thanks to them for for the help. Yeah, that's one thing I'm finding too is that the community's been really good about putting uh, about just answering questions as you're going through because they really are excited about seeing people get into the platform and grow with the platform. So I just put in just for fun, I just embedded one of my snips uh, of my character sheets, and I just put it on the table as a book. I'm going to get out of the dice roller and gather town and just move my little thing, and there it is as a book. And then you can kind of see it in the bottom of your preview, but if you hit X, it will come up, and there it is right there. See? So that actually could work. And actually, it's readable. So that might work for my thing, where I give, I put a book down on you wandered, every. You wandered too far, Vicky. You're outside of the private gaming area. Oh, oh no! Are we talking on Discord or on on here? Okay, I'm go. gonna I'm gonna fix that. Make it make it better. Sorry. So, are we talking? I thought we were talking on Discord. No. Oh. Okay. Anyway, so Trevor, click on my click on my red book now on the table, my friend. I did. That's pretty cool. Okay, good. So yeah, so that would work in a pinch. I could put each character would have a different book of a different color that would have their character sheet in it. Um, and unfortunately, another thing you have to kind of click and find out, but at least, and then I could do like you did have a Google Doc, put it up there so that they want to have it in a PDF window or even go print it out and come and play. They could, right? Yeah, that's right. That's cool. That's very cool. I think now you have the, at least the basics of uh, of a game. You've got your yes. map, your tokens, your dice roller, and your character sheet problems solved. What do you think? It, it yeah, it's looking like a game room. So <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah, no. I'm, I, I'm looking forward to to running more of my games in Gather Town. So that's uh, and and seeing what we can do with that. So you know, the other idea a fantastic was fantastic interface. The other idea I was thinking of, and I know this is just me adding rooms, but I was trying to think about how I could do my D and D game, regular game, again, just to test it out. Because so I'm gonna run, try and run Cyberpunk in here to see how it works. Um, and, and then the next weekend, I'm going to do my D&D &D regular game. And with my D&D &D map, I'm going to take the map and just cut it up into rooms. And then I can, like, build my own room to room with this. You know what I mean? Yep. Instead of using Fog of War and Roll20, I'll just have a, a room. And then I'll have the exit point to another room. And I'll, I can't – my D&D &D group, they like to talk a lot, so they won't get very far. I only need to set up three rooms at this dungeon we're in. And then they can actually walk through the room. And I can That's actually cool. put, um, yeah, I could put objects as the zombies or the, the skeletons they're fighting. That's why I was stealing um, the Halloween avatars from Gather Town so I could populate my own D&D &D game. Hey. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Yeah, so, it, it, it doesn't take much to take that next step and actually play your game in here. With your avatar running around as your token. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think I might try and do that if I have time this weekend or next weekend. <laughs> anyway, that was super fun. So I guess we can yeah. probably wrap it up. Anything else you want to add, Trevor? Uh, not that I can think of now. Oh, you know what I do want to do uh, on this video? I, was, I just want to take people to conventions. I want to take them to uh, just on my screen. I'm going to tabletop events. And when is Empire of the... There you go. Empire Cyclops is November 5th to 7th. I'm clicking on that. So Trevor can't see it, but I'm taking them to the tabletop uh, event site. You can buy your badges now. It's open. And I got to tell you, again, the scuttlebutt we're hearing is that that's going to be an amazing Gather Town experience. I'm just opening up the, 
the events. They've got, holy crap, you guys, they've got like 13 pages of events. And a lot of the games are already sold out. But there's still good tickets and good seats to good games to be had. So I'm just showing them that yeah, on the screen. Lots of, a lot of fun. Uh, the Embrace the Gather Town experience in Spawn of Cyclops Con. And everyone agreed that it was just fantastic. It made it a convention. And I'm sure they've got new things in store for this one. Because they're always pushing the envelope. They are always pushing the envelope. They do such incredible stuff. It's not even funny. And uh, I'm just looking at their... I'm just going through the, their site a little bit. But yeah, you guys, if you want to really see how Gather Town is going to function, and, and these guys are light years ahead of us, and we're going to go there and learn. And please, go get a badge. Um, I'm just clicking on the badge mount. It's only five bucks. And, and you, you know... Go and check it out. Uh, they're doing amazing stuff. There, I just showed that on the on the video there. Okay, so I guess that's it. Hey, Trevor. That's it for now. All right, thanks a lot, everybody. Um, we're going to post this on our, our YouTube if you didn't get a chance to watch it. And that's uh, essentially whiteboards, dice rollers, which we weren't planning on doing, and other ideas on how to get character sheets involved in your online game. Thanks, Trevor. Yeah, thank you, Vicky. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right, and we'll see you guys at Empire of Cyclops, November 5th to 7th. All right, end.